Hey guys, welcome back. This is Saifuddin Ghanizola with another tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to configure the TP-Link 300 Mbps wireless in router. The model of the wireless router is TL-WR841N. I will be using this device as a wireless router. If you don't know how to configure this device as a wireless access point, check out this video. These are the pros of this wireless router. Now let me show you what I will cover in this tutorial. Let's start the configuration now. First of all, turn on your wireless router by connecting the power adapter to the back of the wireless router. Now take a network cable, plug one side to your PC, and the other side to one of the four LAN ports on the back of the wireless router. Now open network and connection settings. After you have opened the network and connection settings, select the Ethernet adapter and check which IP is assigned to your computer. Right click on it and choose status from the right click menu Click on the details button. Here you can see that this IP is assigned by the wireless router to my computer. And this is the default gateway of the wireless router. Click the close button to close the network connection details. To access the wireless router's login page, open your laptop's web browser. Type the default IP of the wireless router. You can also access the wireless router by a URL. Open a new tab and type tplinkwifi.net. The default username and password for the wireless router is admin. You will be automatically redirected to the status page. Let's go with the quick setup mode first. As I mentioned earlier, I will be using this device as a wireless router, so I will choose the wireless router mode in the operation mode menu. Click the next button to proceed to the next step. Before proceeding to the next step, get your network cable and connect it to the one port on the back of the wireless router. After you have connected the internet cable, here you have to choose the internet connection according to your ISP. My ISP has given me the static IP, so I will go with the static IP option. If your ISP has provided you DHCP option, select the auto detect mode and click the next button. It will automatically detect your connection type. Let me go back and select the static IP option. After you have selected the static IP option, you have to enter the basic parameters which are provided by your ISP. After you have entered the parameters, click the next button. It will ask you for a network name and the wireless password. Provide the network name. And then provide a wireless password. If you want to go with the advanced wireless settings, select this option. Here you will be able to change the wireless mode the wireless channel weight and the wireless channel. I will go with the basic option, so I will uncheck this option and click the next button. The quick setup is completed. Here you have to confirm all the parameters and click on the save button.
We have finished the quick setup mode. Let's go with the manual mode. First, you need to change the operation mode. Select the operation mode from the menu and select wireless router from the menu because we will be using this device as a wireless router. Click the save button. It says that this mode is already applied. It's okay. Navigate to the network menu. Under network menu, you have four options. In the one, you have to provide the connection type that's given by your ISP, which I mentioned earlier. I have been given a static IP address by my ISP. That's why I have selected the static IP option. But in your case, it might be different. Select your connection and click on the Save button. The next sub menu under Network is LAN. In the LAN setting, you can change the IP address of the wireless router. I don't want to change the IP address. I will leave it as it is. But if you want to assign a static IP address to the wireless router, you can change it from this menu. Let's navigate to the wireless menu. Under wireless menu, the first option is basic settings. In the wireless basic settings, you can enable and disable the wireless, change the wireless name, change the wireless mode, the wireless channel, and the wireless channel width. And also, you can enable and disable the SSID broadcasting. The next sub menu is WPS. In the WPS menu, which means Wi Fi protected setup, this function will help you add a new device to your network quickly. If the new device supports Wi-Fi protected setup or WPS and is equipped with the configuration button, you can add it to your network by pressing the configuration button on the device and press the WPS button on the router within the two minutes. The device will be automatically connected to your network. The next menu under wireless is wireless security menu. Here you can change the security of your wireless. The version of the wireless security is WAPA 2 PSK and I am using the AES as an encryption. I have given a wireless password. Here you have another option, whether you want to go with the WAPA 2 enterprise mode or with the web mode. But I recommend to go with the WAPA and WAPA 2 mode. It's a good option and also it's secure than WAPA 2 enterprise version and the web version because it uses the AES which means advanced encryption system. The next sub menu under wireless menu is wireless MAC filtering. Using the MAC filtering you can allow and deny some specific MAC addresses to access your network. Here you have two options. If you choose the deny option all the MAC addresses listed here cannot access your network. But if you select the second option which is allow only the allowed MAC addresses will be able to access to your network. Currently, the wireless MAC filtering is disabled. If you want to enable it, click on the Enable button and add the MAC addresses that you want to allow to your network. I don't want to use MAC filtering in my network, so I will disable it. The next sub menu under Wireless menu is Wireless Advanced. Here, you can change the transmit power the bacon interval, the RTS threshold, the fragment threshold, and the DTIM interval. If you are not a tech guy and you don't want to break your wireless router, do not touch any of these options. Leave it as default. The next sub menu is wireless statistic. Here it will show how many devices are currently connected to your network. It will show the MAC address, the current status, the receive and send packet, and through which SSID they are currently connected to your network. The next menu is Guest Network. Here you can configure a guest network for your guests and can separate your local network from your guest network. The first option is that whether you want to allow your guests to access your local network or not. It's a good option to not allow your guests to access your local network. I will leave it disabled. Guest Network Isolation. If you enable this option, one guest cannot communicate with the other guest and guest network bandwidth control. From the name, it appears that you can manage the bandwidth of your guest. Currently, the guest network is not enabled. I will enable the guest network and provide a network name for my guests. You can specify the number of guests they can connect. The maximum number of guests is 32. 
Currently, the security of the wireless is disabled. I will enable the security of the wireless. The only option you have here is WAPA2 Personal. Select the wireless. The authentication type, you can leave it as auto, but I will go with the WAPA2 PSK mode. And in the encryption mode, I will use AES, which is Advanced Encryption System, and provide a wireless password. Using the access time menu, you can restrict your guests to access the guest network. If you use the timeout option, the guest will be automatically disconnected from your network after this much hour and this much minutes. If you choose the scheduled option, you have two options, whether you want the wireless schedule to be enabled or disabled. If you choose the enable option, your guests will be enabled to access the guest network in a specific time. I don't want to use the access time, so I will clear the schedule. The next option is DHCP. If you don't have a DHCP server in your network, it is a good option to use the wireless router as a DHCP. As you can see currently that this wireless router is being used as a DHCP server, and it will assign an IP address from this range for each of the device which asks for an IP from the DHCP server. You can also change the IP range, for example, I will allow the DHCP server to assign an IP from 192.168.0.10 up to 192.168.0.199 and also the least time should be 60 minutes. The default gateway, the DNS and the domain name is optional. Whether you want to assign it or not, that's okay. After you have changed the parameters, click the save button. The DHCP server will assign a new IP address to all the devices which are currently connected to your network. The next sub menu under DHCP menu is DHCP client list. Here you can see all the clients that are assigned an IP address by the DHCP server. This page is only for your information and you cannot change any of the value on this page. To update this page, click on the refresh button. The next sub menu under DHCP is address reservation. Using the address reservation, you can reserve a specific IP address for a specific device and DHCP server will exclude that specific IP from the DHCP list and that specific IP address will be automatically assigned to the specific device. Let's head to the parental control menu. Using the parental control menu, you can establish regulated access for your children and you can administer all the internet activity. First, you have to enable the parental control and you have to enter the MAC address of the PC that you want to administer. You can also schedule the parental control for a specific days. For example, I want to use the parental control only during weekends. Select the days, select the time, and click the add button. The schedule will be added. Using the parental control, you can allow a specific URL that your children are allowed to access. Add the URL and your children will not be allowed to access other websites except for those that you are entering here. For example, I want the children to access only Facebook and YouTube. Add the URL of the Facebook and click on the Add button. Now add the URL of the YouTube and click on the Add button. The children will be allowed to access Facebook and YouTube only. They will not be allowed to access any other websites except for these two. Click on the Save button to save the configurations. The next menu that we want to discuss is the Bandwidth Control. Using the Bandwidth Control menu, you can specify a specific bandwidth for each of the device which is connected to your network. The next menu we will be discussing on is System Tools. Using the system tools, you can change the time zone of your wireless router. For me, it's cobble time. You can change the date. And also you can change the time of your wireless router.
you have an option to update the time of your wireless router according to your PC. Click the Get from PC button. The time and date will be automatically updated according to your PC. If you have an NTP server in your network, enter the IP and the time will automatically sync with the NTP server. Click the Save button to save this option. If you are living in a time zone where it requires daylight saving, you can also enable the daylight saving and choose from which time to which time that daylight saving should be enabled. The next menu that we will be discussing on is Diagnostic. Using the Diagnostic tool, you can ping the devices which are currently connected to your network. Enter the IP address and click the Start button. It will automatically ping the device and shows whether it's connected to your network or not. The next menu we will be discussing on under System Tools is Firmware Upgrade. Using the Firmware Upgrade menu, you can upgrade the wireless router's firmware. You can only upgrade the firmware of your wireless router if you have previously downloaded it from tp-link.com. First, you have to go to tplink.com, download the specific firmware for your wireless router, and then click on the Choose button, select your firmware, and then click on the Upgrade button to upgrade the wireless router's firmware. The next sub-menu under System Tool is Factory Defaults. Using the Factory Defaults, you can restore all the settings and all the configurations that you have done. The wireless router will be automatically reset and all the settings will go back to their default values. The next sub-menu under System Tool is Backup and Restore. Using this menu, you can backup the current configuration of your wireless router and restore it on another wireless router of the same model. And using the Restore version, you can restore a previously saved configuration. The next sub-menu is Reboot. Using the Reboot menu, you can reboot the wireless router. And also, you can schedule the reboot using this menu, Enable Auto Reboot. Currently, it is disabled. Let me enable it. I will schedule to reboot the wireless router on 12 p.m. Select the days. I want the wireless router to be rebooted every day except for Sunday at 12 p.m. After you have choose the schedule, click on the Save button and the wireless router will be automatically rebooted on the selected days and time. The next menu under System Tools is Password. Using the Password menu, you can change the default username and password, and it's strongly recommended that you change the factory username and password. First, I have to type the old username, which is admin. and the old password, which is admin. Now I can type the new username. I want to use root as the new username. And I will type the new password and confirm the new password. After you have entered the parameters, click the Save button. The wireless router will be rebooted and you will be prompt to enter the new username and password. Next menu that we will be discussing on is System Log. In the System Log, you can see all the log of the wireless router. You can also use these options to filter the log to emergency, alert, critical, or any kind of log that you want. The next sub menu under System Tools is the Statistics. The statistic page shows the network traffic of each PC on the LAN. It includes the total traffic and the value of the last packet's statistic interval in seconds. The last option is the logout option. If you click this option, you will be logged out from the wireless router. But first, it will ask you whether you want to log out or not. Click the OK button to log out. And that's all for configuring this device as a wireless router. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any problem, configuring this device as a wireless router, comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I will catch you on soon with another video. Till then, have a nice time.